David? Uh, two questions together. Uh, books and periodicals and staff development. My question is, I just want to make sure what happens at the high school isn't what we got stuck with the middle school. Do we have enough money in book replacements and so forth that we, we are keeping current? Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Same with professional development. Are we doing enough on professional development? Yes. Um, yeah, I can, I can say very confidently, we never experienced the pinch of, you know, we have from year to year had swings in the tax budget, but we never got I had to get to the position that the middle school did for years of sort of putting off textbook purchases. So we have, I think, uh, uh, not a lavish, but a sufficient um, textbook budget. Um, the, and as I mentioned to the board the last time, we've done a little bit of shifting uh, for next year so I can address what I see as the, um, the oldest books or the most outdated books. Uh, from a content standpoint. So, and in professional development, um, again, I, and I think this probably goes for all three schools, um, one of the areas that we have not proposed over the last several years, despite budget cuts, that we should cut is professional development. And um, I'm always, one of the exciting things for me coming out of various school board budget meetings over the years is that the, the board has never asked for that or addressed it. I think we have a healthy, um, professional development budget that um, is a great investment uh, in instruction and curriculum for teachers. Thank you. Yeah. I'd, I'd like to just follow that up and, sure. and ask if you could give us an example of, of a textbook in the high school that's not being replaced um, in, in the next year's budget, but you'd like, but was on your short list. I'm trying to get a sense of how far out of date are we willing to be sure. without you know, getting it into the budget this year? Um, the one that comes to mind, I, I could certainly look for others, but the one that comes specifically to mind is I did have a request for AP government texts to be replaced. Um, they are, I think at this point, five years old. Um, just because of the nature of the topic, it's one of those topics like biology that it's we always want to not have really old books because they'll get really old very quickly. Uh, but it didn't seem to me that you know going one more year is something that we couldn't um, we couldn't um, take on. Um, I know there were a couple of others as well. I I can certainly get them for the board if if, if you'd like to have that information, but. By far, the oldest books in the school that actually didn't, still didn't match how old some of the books that Steve was talking about um, are the French books, French three books. Um, and there are literally three different versions of them with three different colors. And I was remiss. Um, and so different teachers use different versions of the book. Um, honestly, I was remiss for not being aware uh, of how frugal our foreign language department had been over the years in putting up with that text. Otherwise, I would have told them, no, we gotta, we got to replace those things. I did tell them with the last budget year, in other words, for this year, that they needed to replace the, the counterpart almost as old text in Spanish. Um, so those are being actually purchased with this year's budget money, and those new texts will be replaced as well. So, so again, I would say that, um, but those 20 year or 20 plus year texts are a very rare exception at the high school. I think our books typically are, you know, we allow them to go depending on, again, depending on content area, depending on subject area, you know, five, seven years, something like that. Thank you. Yep. See, Steve, how conscious you've made us of books now. What a good job you've done. <laughs> John, I have a um, question. Hey. Um, I've noticed in some of the classes, students are, at, are they're offered that they can buy their own textbooks or they yes. can write in them and therefore for $50, whatever. Um, and then I've seen some other textbooks that have come home to my house that are pretty beat up, um, which I feel that my family's responsible for replacing those because 
the way they carry them back to forth to school. How are your textbooks, guys? Um, four textbooks look awful, and I wouldn't want to give them to somebody else. Right. Do we follow up on care by, by individuals? Yes, we do. The, at the end of the year, um, the teachers collect back the books that they've issued to the students at the beginning of the year if the books are in condition, which sometimes they are, where we don't think we can give those out to another, to next year's students, then we charge the student and the family for those texts. Um, and we send out letters at the beginning of each summer reminding parents and students of that obligation, or sometimes they're lost as well. Um, the ultimate enforcement mechanism at the high school for replacement of those books and collecting that money is we don't allow kids to get graduation okay. caps and gowns we don't allow them to get away from the system okay. um, without catching up on their debts and obligations. And so it, it works? Thank it you. works. It does work, yes. I'm going to try to ask one follow-up question. I, I'm just surprised if I have the right line. $1,500, is that, it's called staff development. Is that professional development? I, I think you're looking at, I think that's probably the office of the principal, David. Is that where you are? Yeah. <laughs> I think, because 1500 I believe, is what is in my head is staff development. Just for the, that is for the office of the principal. That's for the assistant principal and myself, David. That's what that's for. Um, the larger staff development monies are on the next page, at the very top of the page. Uh, there are two accounts. They, they're the two accounts in the third column over that total $26,570. Okay. Thank you for yep. that out for me. I, I didn't think that. I wasn't sure why he was so happy with 1500 bucks. No, I would not I be happy with $1,500 for the entire staff. I, just, I, I didn't read it correctly, sorry. No problem. Any other questions? Okay. Um, maybe, John, you can answer this, or Ken can answer this at another time, but how do the grants come in from CEF and um, the parent associations? How, with staff development, if we need grants for staff development, mm -hmm. um, Ken, can you help me resolve? I've never quite gotten the relationship. If we're doing okay on the budget line for staff development, but we still need grants, and I believe we have a few grants have come in for staff in, in good size. Um, that's a need instead of a want? Is that how, you, we, care, how we make a difference? Well, I think some of the um, things that, you, that we normally can't afford in a school budget, um, like sending teachers to a significant professional development opportunity, sending an English teacher to the National English Teachers Conference, or sending two or three of them. I mean, we can't budget that, um, particularly in, during these economic times. So it's great that you've got CEF to fund experiences like that. Um, and we've got the kind of teachers here who would uh, just flourish with those kinds of opportunities. I mean, there are people who are going to go to them and take full advantage of that kind of experience. So um, that's one of the conversations I've had uh, with CEF, and they seem very receptive is in providing the kinds of professional development experiences that are probably too costly to put into a school budget, but that would uh, really be an upgrade. Uh, whoever gets to do that. And they have funded some of those historically. And then I, how I, I can give a specific example of that, Kate, if that would be helpful. No. Um, you know, this may actually, um, with the support of CEF and also a healthy contribution from the school budget, I'm going to be able to send a team of five people from the high school, Troy Henninger, the assistant principal, plus four teachers, and Steve is sending five staff members from the middle school to a conference in Chicago, Illinois, about professional learning communities. Um, we are building sort of the critical mass of teachers who have had that experience. Um, you know, I, and so that's, that's the kind of thing that if I were, and, and I think the total cost of that between the two schools is probably in the neighborhood of $10,000 or so. 
uh, probably about five thousand. Well, it's actually, a little more than that. I think it might be a total cost of twelve to fourteen thousand dollars. But CEF is helping us with a very generous contribution to that. That's the kind of thing that if I had to, I would either only send one or two people, right. or if I sent five people from the high school, it would be a huge percentage of our uh, professional development. So there is a need for those special occasions to give teachers special opportunities um, that involve especially transportation and hotel. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. Um, I actually had one question. Yeah. Um, I know last meeting we talked about debate, and then I had a chat with you yep. um, in terms of how much that would cost to add. And then I think we also talked about other extracurriculars that we right. thought were underfunded. Yep. Um, yeah, Matt came in, the next, I think, the day after the last school board meeting and asked me how much debate would cost. I haven't costed it out in detail, but I think roughly it would be if the board wished to add debate um, about between the stipend and transportation and judges' fees. Um, there's one other category, but that's most of it. Um, around four to five thousand um, dollars. And what I explained to Matt is that I am completely in favor of, conceptually, the idea of adding debate. I think it's a particularly Lincoln-Douglas Lincoln debate. I am not at all in favor of adding another segment of debate, which is called policy debate. For That's a whole other discussion. <laughs> but Lincoln-Douglas debate, and then I guess there's a public forum debate, because I've since talked to Lisa Melanson, who is interested in advising it if it's added, um, are tremendously valuable programs. My concern is, and the reason I didn't put it in, is number one, we had made a decision as a DLT that we were not going to come to the board and with a proposal this, this budget year to add any new programs. And frankly, there are some programs, um, extracurricular programs in the high school that right now are underfunded compared to uh, what, I, in my view, they should be. Um, one of the ones that ironically is underfunded is speech. Um, and and that, is, that is the result of the incredible growth in the speech program over the last couple of years. It's, it's, it's uh, not a victim by any means, but um, there is not as much money in the budget to support the speech program. A couple of others as well, World Affairs Council. I would never envision, for example, that we would be able to or necessarily even want to pay for all of the expenses associated with World Affairs Council, because honestly, because it involves faraway travel and that sort of thing. But, but honestly, we barely keep up with a stipend uh, to support World Affairs Council. And there's a couple of other examples as well. Um, so my, the reason I didn't put in debate is, number one, about the nature of this budget year and, and, and some competing considerations from other extracurricular activities that, in my view, are underfunded to begin with. But if the board wants to <laughs> tell me to add debate, it will not, not, you know, I won't be opposed to it. But that's uh, roughly, I think, what it would cost. It, it, we prefer, I mean, if you, if it, it's no different than budget reduction. I mean, if you feel like um, the budget is too skinny, um, you know, give me an idea of how much more you think the community can afford, and I'll prioritize where I think the priority would be with those extra funds as opposed to you picking and choosing your special projects. Um, I don't think that's a good way to do budget addition or budget reduction. You don't have to pay attention to what I say, but you've got to give me the opportunity to present to you what I consider the priority for extra funding. Debate might be on there, um, but I think you've got some other things that are bigger priority items. And I don't have anything against debate. A debate's a wonderful activity for students, but um, maybe there's other ways of those, um, getting the debate team off the ground like we do with some other sport teams and stuff like that. Yep. Well, I, I think it is important for the public to hear what we're not spending money on as well as what we are spending on. So it's helpful to learn, thanks for asking the question. At, about what we're not spending money on that would be good for our school, um, I would rely on you to, to, if Jeff was to suggest you what it is we should consider. I'm a little concerned to hear that we have programs that you consider to be existing programs very successful that are underfunded. That bothers me a bit, as opposed to starting a new program. 
And I guess I would like to hear about existing programs that are extremely popular, you think have special value, but are underfunded. I think I would like, I would, I alone, and or the, suggest the school committee consider asking you to give those to Ken and